Everybody good? Can I get a raised hand? Just make sure y'all can see my screen, hear me. Everything's good. War Eagle, love it. Oh my God, now I can't see my screen. There's so many hands. Um, okay, so we are going to talk about um, digital organizing and um, when I am not arguing over why a child vomited today, which is what I've spent my day doing. Um, I am also um, working for a digital consulting firm called Boulder Strategies, and we um, have a sister company called Turnip Blue Digital, and this is a presentation we gave as part of our spring webinar series. It's a little bit of a hodgepodge of, of a couple of them because um, I don't te have to teach y'all how to like hashtag because I think hashtags have existed before this generation. Um, but I think this may be pretty helpful for y'all. Um, so I want to start out talking about social media. Um, I know this is something that's like super intuitive to y'all. Um, and there are, like I said, are parts of this training that I use for people who are like 117 years old, who the Facebook is still really intimidating to them. Um, so bear with me if we kind of skim through some of this because like I don't have to teach y'all what a Facebook group is. So a few ways to organize on social. Facebook is awesome. It's where you find everyone over the age of 50 and myself. Um, you can organize in your community in a couple of ways that are actually pretty effective on Facebook. Um, so creating your own Facebook groups or joining those in your community is a really awesome way to find other like-minded people who may not know where to get started. Um, and then adding those community leaders and activists as friends um, so you can stay in touch, see what they're doing, figure out what events they're promoting and kind of how um, they're working to promote the values that we're sharing too. Um, and then engaging on community news feeds. So if there's a um, really great opinion piece in your local newspaper, like don't just share it and argue with your friends on your own Facebook thread, like go reach out to people who may have um, interesting perspectives in you know, the newspaper's own Facebook feed. Um, and I wanna caveat here because when I say engage, um, I do not mean go spend all day arguing with people on Facebook because that is a useless waste of your time. I mean like actually like dialogue with people um, and remember that like we can't save everyone. So some of them may just have to not be savable with their stupid red hats. Um, some of them we may just let say their stuff and we find the person who maybe like had the initial really good comment and reach out to them and say, you know, hey, I really like what you had to say um, about this topic. We are hosting a phone bank. Would you like to come phone bank with us? Um, so when I say engage, like remember, it's not just arguing with people on Facebook. It's actually like creating that dialogue. Twitter is pretty much the same thing. Y'all know this. Use hashtags to find people you may not know. Show support to people in your community. Um, a lot of people, I think, on Twitter have this habit of just like blasting out into the void and only tweeting about like themselves and their perspective. But like this is a really good time, especially for people who are allies for marginalized groups to instead of giving your own hot take on something going on, like amplify the voices of people in communities that may need their voices amplified right now. Um, so show that support, show appreciation, say, you know, thank you so much for sharing your story. I really enjoyed hearing it. Like, don't just throw them a like, like really support them and engage with them right now. And then email organizing, um, keep everybody in the loop with regular updates, um, build for town halls, digital moments, other strategies, and then get feedback through forms. So email is a really good way to actually get cool two-way dialogue going um, within your group. And the Tools We Love Action Network. So this is a free and low cost email sending option for your campaign. And this was geared towards candidates. So just assume anytime I say campaign, I mean your chapter. Um, and it also is a great way to do synchronized action for forms and petitions and all of that stuff to help build and grow your list, which we'll get to in a second. Um, fun surprise you are all going to get an action network. HSDA has bought in at enterprise level, which means that HSDA is the parent of the big action network family. We are the grandparent account. Um, and then each state will get a parent account and each chapter will get a child account. As long as you use it appropriately and don't abuse it, we will do that and it will be great. Um, please be patient with us as we set this up. We're going to have two trainings on action network tomorrow. Um, if you are a state or chapter leader, um, I would strongly recommend um, checking out that Action Network training, especially if you're a state leader, because when we build our snowflake, right, I can train your state leaders how to do this, and then you can train your chapter leaders. So you're getting an Action Network, hang tight, be patient. Um, 
All right. Oh, thanks about my gifts. Um, all right, so text message organizing. This is a relatively new tool. Um, and I know it's one that you crazy kids are using a lot more these days. Um, it gives people a way to take action in a more direct way um, and help text your list to build engagement for whatever you're doing, but just be sure to map your data back. If it's not actually being reported and stored anywhere, then it's not actually happening. And that's a field rule that you will hear time and time again in your lives. Um, so I'm kind of flying through all this, but um, we'll recap the, these different things kind of as we go. Um, Get Through is a really awesome low cost peer to peer texting software. Um, and we use that for my clients at work. Also, um, the Action Network has just developed its own texting platform that I have not even like taken the time to get to know yet. So that's something that y'all can also play with once you get in there. So strategies to engage um, through social media. I did not know this was a thing until my dear friend Ashley, who worked on Cory Booker's campaign, um, told me about face banking in the time of COVID. Um, and this could be something particularly helpful because you all have that have chapters in your high schools, you have kind of a closed universe, right? Like there are exactly a certain number of students who are enrolled in your high school. And that means that your maximum number of members is exactly that number of students. Um, so you can reach out to those people just like you would when you're phone banking or canvassing um, and give them ways to get involved. Keep those data points, whether y'all probably aren't using the voter file to organize your chapter, but whether you're doing it in a spreadsheet or you're using Action Network, or whatever the case may be, map that data back. If somebody says like, yeah, I'm interested, but not right now, we're gonna follow up with them later. If somebody says like, no thanks, I like my red hat, we are going to never talk to them ever again and put their contact information in the garbage where it belongs. Um, so just make sure that whenever you're talking to people, you're building these relationships, but you're also mapping that data back for later. Um, digital moments. So this is a cool way to get everybody to create some buzz. Um, so you can all tweet at or tag a certain person at once um, to ask them a question or shed light on an issue. Um, I would highly advise y'all to be nice about this. Like you can hold people accountable while being respectful. Um, so remember that's an important factor to this. Um, but you can also do like in Iowa, they did the why organize hashtag and that was a pretty cool digital moment. Um, I think the one that we all know and remember is the Me Too movement because it's been phenomenal in um, starting a conversation around um, all kinds of issues, frankly, in all kinds of places. Um, Black Lives Matter has been not just a digital moment, but also has been um, a great, you know, overall movement that we've they've integrated different social cues to. Um, so think through how you can take what you're doing in real life and then integrate it into digital whether it's people telling their story, like Love talked about on the first night um, where there was, you know, you're telling your story in your personal narrative and maybe you're kind of highlighting those people through um, different videos that you share with their permission only ever, um, or what other ways that you may find to kind of integrate that. Um, those digital moments are a great way to get people um, to participate because everybody can just like tweet back with something. It's a lot harder to get them to actually come to an event. So it's a good first step. Um, vote tripling. So this is a fun one. Um, Doug Jones uses vote tripling and I generally support everything Doug Jones does in this world. Um, you basically ask people to give you the names of three contacts who they are going to remind to go vote. Um, and then you tell them in GOTV to remind their friends to go vote. Um, but this can also work backwards in terms of, let's say, you know, give us the name. So we we're doing the Rocky Mountain Wolf Project right now we're trying to bring wolves back to the Colorado Rocky Mountains because as a fun fact there are no wolves in the Colorado Rocky Mountains um and one thing that we did was like great you support wolf restoration um give us the name of three people who will also support wolf restoration and um even before we got into like the actual like vote campaign side of this around the ballot initiative we were able to reach out to those people and kind of get them to take surveys on where they stand and get them to learn more and get them to download our eBooks and get them to give us their $5. Um, and so it's a great way to kind of bring new people into the fold. Um, go live, actually, never mind. High school dumbs are not allowed to go live. Y'all have broken that. Um, but if you do go live, be smart about it. Have a script, kind of have like a general shell of how you want that live to look. 
Um, and then remember those can be open or closed. Um, so if you are going to say stupid stuff, I would recommend you don't, um, or you do a closed meeting. Um, but if you're doing an open meeting, that would be great for like an interview with a candidate or something like that, where um, there's a lot of opportunity for you to kind of dialogue and have that conversation with somebody. Um, be authentic, be yourself, um, but kind of know how you want that time to flow. Know if you've got, you know, we're gonna plan for 30 minute live. We wanna plan for five minutes of introductions and opening banter. And then we're gonna plan for, you know, three minutes of introduction for the person who's joining us. And then we're gonna plan for these five questions. And then we're gonna plan for 10 minutes of Q and A and then a wrap up and we're done. Um, so you kind of just like have an overarching feel there, but like that doesn't limit you from taking questions from the audience or that sort of thing too. Um, and then the big one right now, because we are limited in the face-to-face -face that we can do in this world is go one-to-one -one with digital opportunities. So FaceTime, we will hang out, all of that stuff to have that kind of initial one-on-one -on -one that you may do with somebody who's wanting to get involved, just like how you may like if somebody wants to consider joining your chapter, you may go for coffee or get a bagel or whatever it is that the kids do these days when you're not in school. We used to go to get smoothies. That was our thing. Um, but you can still do that and have those conversations um, just like you would in public. You just now, you know, we're going to do it through Zoom. So that's a good opportunity. Um, another way to do this is through digital ads. Um, I know this is something that requires a little bit of a budget and it's something that's not necessarily available to everyone at all levels. Um, but there is still the opportunity to do a little bit of targeted Facebook ads or a little bit of display to make up some money go a little further than it might otherwise would. So email list building, that kind of covers the social space. Y'all don't need much help covering the social space to be honest, make it pretty and don't say stupid stuff. And that's the summary of social media. Um, email list building. So this is something that for whatever reason, HSDA has never done right. And I don't know why, because every year I tell them to do it right. And every year they ignore me. Um, but you should have an email list that just like doesn't die. Like there should always be the currently enrolled students list. And those are the ones that you reach out about the meeting that's at three o'clock today. Um, but you should also still have the names and emails of people who have graduated and who have otherwise invested in your organization. Because when you need $5, they're the people you're going to email. Um, when we need mentors, like we've got now multiple mentors coming back that are former HSDA students. Um, so those people, you can kind of build that institutional memory by keeping a solid list. So email is the most effective way to talk to a lot of people at once. It's super efficient. It's affordable. Um, it's cheaper than mail pieces. It's less time consuming than text messages. And it's two way. So like when you do some kind of a blast or like you put up like a flyer in the hallway, nobody can respond to that without just like a Sharpie on it in a rude way. Um, so this is a way that people can reply and they can give you feedback and responses directly. Um, and it's also a way that you can solicit action. So people can click on those links right there. They can take action. They can watch the video. They can do whatever the next thing is. Cause remember we talked this morning about like, there always needs to be a next thing you're asking people to do. Um, so email gives you a really good way to get people to do that next thing. And it reaches an audience that's willing to engage because frankly, if people have signed up for your email list. They're probably supportive of what we're doing. So it can help us do a lot of things. So we can recruit signups. We can build event RSVPs. We can get advocacy. We can get vote tripling signups. We can raise money $5 at a time. There's so many things that email can do. It's pretty much, like it's limitless, it's cool, it's a great thing. It's getting a little aged out with y'all's generation. I get that, that um, the emails aren't as effective, um, but I'll tell y'all, I don't know how many people I have that are like some old lady named Karen in Colorado who replies to me on the Wolves email saying like, you just asked me for $5 yesterday, don't you know that? Like. Yeah, I know I asked $85,000 for $5 yesterday. I asked 85,000 people for $5 today and I'll do it again tomorrow and you'll get the email again tomorrow because I'm not just emailing you, Karen. Um, so there's still people who think this is a one-to-one -one tool even when it's bulk is I guess my point here. So when you build your database, um, how many of y'all, let's see some hands, how many of y'all have like a solid email list for your group right now?
Pretty good, pretty good. How many of y'all need more emails on your list? Way more hands going up, way more. Okay, so one of the cool ways to do that, use that call to action button on your Facebook page. So if your chapter has a Facebook, um, get that to go directly to an info grab where if somebody clicks it, it doesn't just take them to the homepage of your website. It needs to take them directly to a place where they can sign up to give you their information. Um, and the same thing goes for like your bio link on Instagram and Twitter. Instead of it just going directly to like hsms.org, it should go to like hsms.org slash learn more or something like that where people can immediately give you their email, give you their zip code and tell you like, are they a student? Are they a parent? Are they a teacher? Are they a creeper just trying to like creep on the high school dens? I don't know. Like they can tell you kind of who they are and then you can keep that in your data because like we're probably not going to invite the like random party person who just wants to know what the high school dens are doing to an event but we're certainly going to send them those fundraising emails um same thing so with your website too make sure you have a sign up form at the front of your page that should be one of the first things there get that data and then when you are talking to people whether it's in the field whether it's you know in class or out in public um if you see somebody and like you just like their bumper stickers be like hey do you want to consider joining high school dens or do you want to learn more about high school dens and you'd be surprised what they say. Um, and then make sure you have a sign up form at every single event you do, um, whether it's a digital event or otherwise, and put that data into the system because if the data ain't entered, it didn't happen. I'm just gonna keep saying it. So when you're sending emails, you wanna optimize those, make sure you're actually getting good results. Um, as y'all see here, how many of y'all were in the training this morning? We have SMART goals making a comeback because I even talk about SMART goals at work. So, you know, don't judge me. Um, we wanna make sure that even our emails, each email should kind of have a little bit of a SMART plan here. What are we trying to do with it? So if our email goal is to raise $500 in total contributions from 20 people, that's specific, it's measurable, it's maybe achievable depending on your list. Um, it is relevant to our goal of always raising money and it is timely because we have a deadline on it. Um, so you can even take each kind of email send you're looking at or your overall email program and throw those smart goals and smart objectives into the mix with it. Um, the next thing is keep it simple. Don't be overwhelming. Like how many of y'all get Joe Biden emails? It's so sad. It's like it's overwhelming. I deleted 48 emails out of my inbox this morning from Sunday and today from the DNC and Joe Biden and Doug Jones and the D trip and the DSC. And like, it, it's insanity. I like skimmed the subject lines and was like, Oh, Mark Kelly's brother sent an email out to the DSCC. That's cool. And that was the end of my caring about it. And that is like what most people are going to do if it doesn't directly pertain to them. So, if you're sending it out to somebody who's not necessarily an active member, who you're just trying to do some fundraising solicitation, remember they're not going to read every word of it. Avoid the big blocks of text. Make this like, hey, Beth, you know, we're trying to raise money for X project. Click here to chip in. This project is important because A, B, and C. Click here to chip in. When you donate, A, B, and C happens. Click here to chip in. Thanks. Bye. Like that is your email right there. Um, keep it simple. Ask multiple times and get it out the door to get your five dollars coming in um and then tailor your ask so if people are on your list they probably already like what you're doing um so you want to be specific with them too if you tell people like how many of y'all do that thing when you see somebody and you're like oh my god friend i haven't seen you in so long and they're like oh my god it's been so long we should hang out and you're like yeah we should totally hang out let's do something soon yeah let's do all right bye how many of you ever actually end up doing something with that person? I don't believe any of you. You're all lying. There's five people with their hands up and you're all lying. Nothing ever happens, right? Like you all just like go your separate ways because like there's nothing specific there. Um, unless you do it like right in that moment. If you're like, oh my God, it's been so long. I'm going to get coffee. You want to come with me to get coffee right now? Then like maybe because you gave them a something to do next, right? Um, so be specific, give people the specific thing to donate, give them a specific event to RSVP to. Don't just say, get involved, say like, come volunteer this Saturday at our phone bank or whatever the case may be. 
Um, and that way too, if they say they can't do it, then you're like, great, we're also doing one next Saturday. And then they're like, oh, uh, I can't do next Saturday either. And you're like, oh, well, we have a text bank on Tuesday. And then they're like, mm, Tuesday's busy. And you're like, oh, well, happy hour on Wednesday. And eventually they're gonna run out of excuses and they'll have to say yes to something. And then you harass them until they come. And being an organizer is just largely reminding people that they said they would do something. Um, also, use some graphics. So don't make your emails super graphic-y because it will bog down and it will flag spam and it will take forever to load and it's stupid and it's annoying. But if you use like a picture, that's pretty cool. If you use a graphic button instead of just a text link, that makes it cool. So do some stuff to like draw the eye in and use color in cool ways too. Um, last tip here is use A-B test. So in Action Network, you'll have this ability when you all get your Action Network account sometimes before Christmas. Um, and you can test your sender, you can test your subject, you can even test things within the body to see like which phrasing of your ask works better. Um, but y'all have all taken the, um, the, what's the scientific method, right? So like if you change, if you A-B test like the subject and you A-B test the sender and you A-B test the body, like what does it show you? It shows you're an idiot who doesn't understand science. That's what it does. Um, so only test one thing at a time because otherwise it doesn't actually show you what change works to give you good results. Cool. cool. So send your emails, blast that puppy out, send it far and wide, um, and then just like use some strategic targeting in there. So if somebody has already RSVP to an event, throw them out of the list. They're coming, they get it, they'll get a reminder. Um, if people have donated within the past week, I like to exclude them over a certain amount of money, but sometimes you just email them again. They usually don't get that offended. Um, and then you can also target strategically in your fundraising asks. So I'll use the wolves again, just because it's like our biggest fundraising project right now. There are some people, if I send an email that says, it's our end of month deadline, please give us money. And I ask them to please give me $5,000. You know what they'll do? By God, they will click that button and I will get $5,000. But if I ask them for $5, do you know what they'll do? They'll click that button and I'll get $5. So I want to ask those people for $5,000 every time. And I want to ask the people who, and they won't give it every time, but usually. Um, and then there are people who like, if you ask them for too much money, they get super offended and they're like, why in the world do you think I have $1,000? I can't pay my rent this month. Stop it. So you can also kind of segment out if somebody's never donated before hit them with that can you donate two dollar thing um and if somebody's a routine large donor go ahead and ask them for more money um and then you can try also sending emails on different days of the week um or different day parts so some people i'm a morning email massacre person if i have an email in my inbox between 6 p.m and 8 a.m it is getting deleted unless it is essential but if you email me at like two o'clock in the afternoon when I'm like kind of bored and don't really want to be doing anything anymore, I might read it. We'll see. Um, some people are exactly the opposite. Some people get to their desk and they're like, I'm going to read every single email before I actually do something productive today. Um, those people are weird. Um, but those people are the ones that you can get with your morning send emails. I'm somebody that you catch with an afternoon or an evening send email. Um, so try mixing that up too, because you'll catch different people at different times. Um, so building your list, um, and like I said, this is kind of geared towards candidates, so it might not all be applicable, um, but export your emails from your personal inbox. Go through those business cards, man. Y'all go to events, right? And like everybody hands you a business card and is like, let me know if I can do anything, right? Like you walk out of an event with a stack like this. Like, I think I have my stack of business cards, like right over here for some reason. Here's like four of them from someone where people like last year, where people hand me their cards and I'm like, I need to enter that. And it's still sitting in my desk drawer. Um, enter those in, use them. And then when they ask you if they can do something, now you're asking them and it's on them. Get your friends and neighbors to sign up. We've already talked through some strategies to do that. And then make sure that if your school or your work has rules on sending political email, like I know a lot of y'all have student email accounts. Make sure you're following whatever those rules are. Don't get in trouble. Don't get expelled. That'd be bad. Um, so shamelessly get signups everywhere. Um, nobody attends an event without signing in. Be ruthless. Miriam's good at this. This is her job. 
Um, and then literally I keep a sign up sheet everywhere. They are everywhere I am. There is a sign up sheet. There's a way to get involved and there's a way to donate. Keep them everywhere. So we talked about the call to action button, throw it in there. This is Alexis. She's great. Um, throw in those um, email grabs to your website and social media and then create those online actions. So this is one that the Bay Area Young Dens did here in Alabama. Um, when President Trump came to Mobile, they um, cut down a Christmas tree in the city park so that he could have a Christmas tree at his rally because he's a psycho. Um, and the city paid for it. And so they started a petition to get the city reimbursed for what the president cost the city to come visit because that's what's appropriate. And their list nearly doubled in size um, or tripled in size. I don't, I'm never good at math. Um, it grew a lot. Um, that's a good number. And now all those people, they're going to be able to invite to events. So a lot of these people may be people who don't necessarily even think of themselves as political. They just know that like tax dollars should be going to that. But those are people who are kind of like minded, right? And if we can get them kind of thinking with us and agreeing with us, now maybe they'll start voting with us because that's what we really ultimately want. Um, this is one where we get 310 new emails on our list for Joe Siegelman's campaign. So his dad um, had been governor of Alabama. Ryland thought that I had worked on the governor's campaign. I was in fact in elementary school when he was the governor. So thank you, Ryland, for assuming I'm 125 years old. Um, but we did this um, Happy Father's Day card so that people could um, sign on to wish Governor Siegelman a Happy Father's Day. Um, also go watch Atticus and the Architect on Amazon, it's great. Um, but this was just a cool way to get people to engage and get Democrats to sign up because what had happened was Governor Siegelman was the last Democratic governor in Alabama. A lot of, especially older Democrats, knew and respected Governor Siegelman, but we didn't have the data on those email lists from when he was governor because like we were still on like the AOL, like man running across the screen dial up back then. Um, so this is a way to kind of get those older people who have now gotten email addresses to sign up and join in so we could keep their data. Um, and then email asking into your field texting. So as you're knocking doors or phone banking or text banking, whatever you're may doing, um, ask people if they want to join your email list. Just like ask them. Worst thing they're going to say is no, go away, don't ask me questions, and you'll say fine. Um, but you'll get a couple of emails. So add it into those scripts and work it in. And then get your supporters to help you. This is kind of like your vote tripling. Um, you can also do the give me five, where like you get people who come to your meeting to also like recruit five people who may want to learn more. Um, and then get them also to kind of share on social media. So this is another kind of weird way to build the snowflake. I'm telling y'all it's the cult of the snowflake. Um, but you can then say, okay, well, I'm going to, you know, our chapter is going to put out this post and I'm going to get the people on my board to share it. And then from there, they're going to each ask three people to share it. And then they're going to ask three people to share it and it'll grow kind of like great chain mail. Um, and last thing, most important, check your analytics. So if you're getting a lot of bounce rates, delete those people off. It's going to hurt you. Um, if you're getting spam complaints, um, get those opt-ins. If your emails aren't getting opened, fix your subject line or send it different times a day. I'll tell y'all one thing that y'all love to do is those like 2 a.m. emails. Ain't nobody reading an email at 2 a.m. Send it during the day when people are awake. Um, and then if they're not producing results, like try making your ask clear. Try diversifying your ask. Maybe the things you're asking people to do isn't what they want to do. So you might send out a form that asks people to say like how do you want to get involved and see if they'll reply to that and if they don't reply to that then they don't probably want to get involved or you've done something terribly wrong you should call me so last strategy here peer-to-peer -peer texting and it is 504 i've got like 30 minutes right i'm all the way over where's my calendar what day is it who am i who are you yeah we got plenty of time okay um, so peer-to-peer -peer texting is kind of the newest um, way to engage with people. This started in 16, um, and it's a very efficient way because people open their text messages usually, um, and it's a good way to get um, recruitment in real time, to get some basic data from, you know, where people stand on certain events or candidate support. Um, you can raise some money with it. You can chase ballots down. Um, a lot of y'all probably live in states where they're doing vote by mail, like all vote by mail. 
this cycle. Um, and so if you know that you've got your list where you registered all these people to vote, you might want to follow up with them when ballots drop and be like, hey, ballots are out. Be sure to vote. Let us know if you have any questions about how to cast your ballot. If you live in Wisconsin, be sure to put two stamps on it because it's a crazy voter suppression tactic. Um, that sort of thing. So there are two ways to send um, text messages for organizing. Peer-to-peer um, -peer is not broadcast. So if you get the um, awful Joe Biden text messages, how many of y'all get the Joe Biden text messages 12 times a day? Oh yeah, my God, all of us, it's great. Um, that is broadcast texting and it's terrifying. Um, don't do that unless you're Joe Biden and you can get away with it. Um, usually what we would be doing is this peer-to-peer. -peer. So it's actually a real person. You can do it masking your phone number or you can do it just directly from your phone number. Um, and you send people messages one to one. Um, and there's tools like hustle and get through that lets you do it super quick. Um, but if you don't want to subscribe to those and you're sending like 20 messages, that is a copy and paste job and you can get it right out the door. So that's kind of just the difference there between those two um, ways to reach out. Um, texting also gets results. So the response rate is about 20 to 30 percent, whereas with email, you're looking at like seven to 10, 10 if you got a really good list. Um, and the opt out rates two to 5%. So it works out pretty well. Um, and if you're using a software like get through your texters can text between 500 and 2000 people every hour. So that's super efficient for your little text banking um, events that you get going. Here's some fun facts though, 57% of Americans don't have landlines. Um, and if you're looking at young people, three fourths of y'all, I don't believe there are a quarter of young people who have landlines like that fascinates me. Um, and two thirds of people who are um, way below the poverty line also don't have landlines. So there are a lot of um, factors here. But the fact is, if you want to communicate with people on cell phones, this is a great way to do it. And so you can get a spreadsheet, upload your list to get through, use the Action Network texting tool, whatever you choose. The bottom of the thing just has to be that your data gets mapped back because if your data ain't recorded, it didn't happen. Um, don't be afraid of a small universe. If there's just like 10 people who are like maybe interested in coming to this event, send 10 text messages to 10 people. That's fine. Um, it doesn't have to always be a big production. Um, so craft your audience based on like what the next step should be for those people and map your data back. Always, always, always. Even if it's a spreadsheet. I've run a state senate campaign out of a spreadsheet before. You can do it. Um, so then you're going to create your campaign with an ask in mind. So what do you want your contact to do? Do you want them to come to an event? Do you want them to donate money? Do you want them to join um, HSTA Summit? Like, what is it that you want them to do? And then target them based on prior engagement, demographics, data, et cetera, et cetera. So if we have a list that has somebody who's um, been involved in Summit and they're like 27 years old, um, do we want to maybe text them to come to Summit? Like that would not be a solid ask. We will want to maybe ask them to be a mentor or maybe um, pay for a scholarship for a student to come to the summit. Um, so kind of think through like what you're asking them to do, but also like what you know about them as a person and where they would actually be more likely to say yes to an ask. So we're going to do some exercises here. Let me get, let me get some panelists, Milo. Let's get three panelists up here. I need some people in the hot seat. Okay, that's one. Um, anyone who wants to be promoted, raise your hand. All right, we're gonna start with Rachel while you do that, Milo. Rachel, you're up first. You're gonna be our, our example. You ready? Okay, so we have our friend Joe here. Joe is a 34-year-old union worker. Um, he has volunteered for this campaign before. Um, and so we want to send him an ask that would match with him. So what, um, what ask would you pick for Joe? I think you're muted. If he's volunteered before, I'd ask him to canvas. Yes, that's the right answer. Um, because if he's volunteering on a campaign, he's probably registered to vote, right? Like odds are. And if he's a union worker, he's probably registered to vote because they don't play. Um, so I would definitely ask him to come canvas because he's done it before and he will do it again. So this is kind of just a sample text that we may send to Joe. 
um, we have a specific goal we're going to get him to buy in on, and um, we want him to come knock some doors in our neighborhood. Okay. Um, Muriel, is that, is that how to pronounce it? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, so we got yeah. Anthony here. Anthony is 18. He's a high school student, and he's a friend of our candidate's son that we're helping. What would we ask him to do? I'd say either register to vote because he's 18, so it's possible he hasn't registered yet, and because he's a friend of the candidate's son, it's likely that he would vote for the candidate. But also, if he knows the candidate by extension, joining for house party might also be a plausible option. Yeah, and he might come canvas too. Like, he seems like a young spry, young spry student. Maybe he'll be able to knock some doors, climb up those hills that we don't want to climb up. But I think definitely register to vote would be my answer here. Let's do that first and foremost. So here's just kind of a sample text um, that we may send to Anthony um, to get him to register. Okay, and then who else have I got? Let me see. Oak? Yeah. Okay, we got Shirley here. We don't know how old she is because the lady never tells, um, but she is a local attorney and she has donated to our candidate. So what may we want her to do? Well, if she's already made a donation, she's probably reg registered to vote. Um, I would say probably a house party because that hasn't been chosen yet. Yeah, that's a, that's a good guess. Um, also because um, she, if she's a donor, that might be a good chance to kind of validate her and get her to come mm -hmm. schmooze a little bit. Um, and if she's an attorney and she's donated, she might know other people in the community who haven't donated, and those people can be your best pressure sometimes, kind of be a little bit of a surrogate to get other people to get off that checkbook too. So this is the text we may send her. Um, we are having an event at Anne's house, because of course we are. Um, so let's get her in. Awesome, thanks y'all. So when you're having conversations with peer-to-peer, -peer, you wanna just do it in a direct way. So keep your focus on collecting data and um, you can even build out a conversation tree to give volunteers guidance on how to respond appropriately. So think about something like this. If our key data point that we want to get out of this is, do you support Leslie Nope? Um, there are three really ways that people may answer. They could say, I'm not voting, but that's a stupid answer, so we're not going to give that any credit. Um, the, really, the three ways are yes, no, and I'm not sure, right? So yes, if they're voting for Leslie, then what's the next question we're gonna ask? Can you come to this event? If they say yes, we're gonna give them the RSVP link and then we're gonna put them on the event reminder list. If they say no, we're gonna give them something else to do next because they should always have something to do next. Um, if they say no, then we may ask who they are voting for. If it's a two-way race, that's pretty obvious, um, but it could be, it's one of those where it's like a six-way like city council election where we may need to know who they're voting for because we could get to a runoff and their candidate not make it to a runoff. And if that's the case, then it may be super helpful to know that they're up for grabs for the runoff election. Um, so we're gonna map them down and put them on a list. And then if they don't know who they're voting for, like, do you wanna learn more? Which issues matter to you? Like, do you wanna visit our website? Like, can we get your contact information to talk to you more? Um, and then put them on that follow-up list too. So this is kind of just a good way to think through like how to keep that conversation in a way that you stay focused on kind of what we're trying to get out of it, which is this key data point, but then these kind of sub data points too. And then next we're gonna map your data back. If it's not your voter file, it better be a spreadsheet, it better be Action Network, it better be like a clipboard that hangs on your wall. I don't care, I just wanna see your data. Um, and then use this to inform kind of your layered comm strategy. So if you send out a text asking people to RSVP to this event and you text through your whole list and none of these people um, RSVP yes, then like we should probably revisit something, right? Like either people aren't interested or that's a really bad day and we didn't plan for that or um, there's something we need to know to get people to come to this. So we may send out an email that says like, hey, we might need to reschedule this. What day and time is good for everybody and see if people are interested in coming if we reschedule it. Um, so we can kind of use that to think through like how we're going to layer stuff together. Um, and then if you do use through text, it, there's two-way band syncing, which is super cool, but probably not super helpful if you're organizing on campus. So whatever you're doing, integrate it within your digital structure. This shouldn't be the only thing you're doing it should be one touch of it. So if you're planning an event, there should be like the first email that goes out to let people know about it and then some social posts and then like a first text to gauge interaction and then maybe like 
a flyer goes up at school and then maybe we do another email and then maybe we do another text and then we do a follow-up reminder. So it should all be part of this like layered in um, communication strategy, not just um, a blast because organizing is about relationship building. So if you are only ever just like blasting people out when you need something from them, that's not building that relationship. You wanna really kind of create that dialogue with them. Um, and last but not least, let your personality shine. Authenticity is key. Um, so get creative, make scripts unique to your team, like use emojis, be conversational, um, like be, be natural, be fine, you're okay, you've got this. Um, be funny, if you're funny, if you're not funny, don't be funny. If you're nerdy, like be nerdy, it's okay, just like be who you are and it'll work out. So what do y'all think? Let's build, let's do some digital and let's make this work and we can open for questions. Okay. Um, is there a place you can view these slides afterwards? You can actually view the entire spring webinar series um, at turnablydigital.com. How relevant is the fundraising aspect for local and state chapters? Um, I think pretty relevant because you should be fundraising like in anything you're doing, there should be like the goal of it being a money neutral event. Um, so if you're spending money on something, you should be trying to raise money to cover it. Um, and even, you know, as a chapter event, it might not be that you're trying to raise like oodles and boodles of money, but it could be that like, it's a good way, I guess the way I'm trying to say is it, like, it's a good way to get buy-in from community members where like, so if you're having an event and you want to get pizza, like get that like kooky old lady at the democratic club. That's like always talking about how you're the future of the party get her to buy you pizza, like go for it. Um, so those, it's kind of a way to get people to buy in because some people, when they have that opportunity to help, however they are able to do it, um, it will give them that feel like they're investing back in you too. Um, if you're a new chapter, what should start your fundraising goal? Um, it depends on your number of members, it depends on your community. There's so many factors to that. Um, my goal, my fundraising goal is always to make more than I spend. So if you're trying to have like a plated dinner for 500, we're going to need to up that fundraising goal a little bit. But if you're just trying to like buy pizza or like do Harvey milk and cookies, like y'all, I swear, if you do Harvey milk and cookies, all you have to do is find somebody whose parents will let you like use the big screen in the living room and you need like three gallons of milk and you need like 12 packs of break and bake cookies. And that's like a $25 event. And I promise you, like, if you can't find somebody to give you $25 for Harvey Milk and Cookies, you call me and I will raise you $25 for Harvey Milk and Cookies. Um, so you can definitely just kind of set those goals, like, relative to what you're trying to do. Um, is there a way to see which of my peers have registered to vote to know who to target? Yes, it is called the voter file. Um, your state party should have access to it through the DNC, and so your county parties may have it. Um, you can buy, I know in Alabama, you can buy the list from the Secretary of State but there is um, usually a voter file where you can see who's registered in your state. Bueller. Um, does your chapter control your funds? Um, your chapter should have like rules in place for how to spend funds. Like this isn't like a slush fund for the chair. Um, I know in HSDA, I have the checkbook for HSDA, um, but each state has their own resources. And then from there, each chapter, I don't even know how chapter budgets work, if they go through the schools or what the deal is with that. Um, but that is something that you should have at least something like a advisor at your school that helps with that, or you should have rules in place for like how to approve expenditures and that sort of thing. Will HSDA be subject to new fundraising regulations depending on our organizational status? Um, yes and no, it just depends. We don't know yet, we'll figure it out. It'll be fine, we can raise money. When is Action Network going to be made available and is there any limit to the amount of logins for state and local chapters? Um, no, there is no limit right now. Um, it's based on the number of emails we send, um, but right now we're good and it will be made available. States will get their action networks tomorrow. I think we're going to just like set them up during one of the trainings. Um, but y'all got to be patient on that. 
What are the fundraising regulations for HSDA? We're good. If you're a chapter or a state, you have to follow state and local rules. If you are raising for national, come talk to me and we will talk about the fundraising regulations there. Or I will put you in touch with some lovely attorney in DC who can answer questions I can't. As a local chapter, do we control our bank account? Again, like these are, there are like 52 theoretically different states that each of this stuff is different. Um, the point of this training is digital organizing, not like who's in charge of the money. Um, if you are a local chapter at a high school, there's probably some advisor who's handling your money. If you are on the state level, like there's probably some local adult board that's helping you. Um, I don't know what each school's requirements are for raising money for projects. I have no idea. Like if you want to reach out, you know, to your state leader and see if they can help you with that, they probably can, but that's way too in the weeds for me to be able to help with right now. Um, will this training video be available for later viewing? Milo, what you think? Um, well, we are recording it and I think we were planning to post it to our YouTube. Cool. Um, can state chapters create and sell merch to raise money? I don't know, that's subject to state and local regulations. I don't have a problem with it as long as it's not ugly. Um, but you should probably have a person in your state who's helping you do this and who is helping run your bank account and make sure that everything you're doing in your state is appropriate. So I would talk to that person. Um, but otherwise, sure, raise all the money you want from selling merch. Sounds like I should have done a fundraising training instead of a digital organizing training. All right, any other questions? All right, I think that's everything. Seeing no more questions, I think we can be done. Just jumping in here, um, tonight we have our ice cream social so be sure to bring your own ice cream. Unfortunately, we cannot provide it for you, um, but be, it's going to be really fun. Hopefully, um, we'll get to even more bonding and hear from even more of you. And tomorrow, we have some really, really cool programming on the horizon, so make sure you tune in and tell your friends. I see that we slowly dwindle participants over the day, which I totally understand. It's a lot of Zoom, it's taxing, but encourage your friends to, to keep with it. Encourage your state leaders, encourage your local chapter leaders. There is so much good stuff happening over the next couple of days and we want you guys to experience it all. Thanks guys so much. Hope to see you at the ice cream social.